I have on more than one occasion talked about lasers for acne, and they've always been anecdotal. So this is the first time that a real study has been done, uh, a double-blind randomized controlled study to look at uh, this system for the treatment of moderate to severe acne. Um, and so, you know, we, we all know about this. I mean, acne is really common. We understand the pathogenesis has P acne uh, and a lot of other things going on there. And we know the treatments are all out there. Uh, we've got topical treatments. We have oral treatments. Uh, some of them are irritating these treatments. Uh, compliance is always an issue. Uh, and confusion about treatment regimens exists. Uh, more and more people don't want to take antibiotics because of antibiotic resistance. Uh, physical modalities of treatment have become more popular as time has gone on, and those include chemical peels and non-ablative radiofrequency. Um, but recently, we've seen that uh, ablative laser treatments can improve acne, um, although they have their issues. Uh, and laser therapy is successful in diminishing acne uh, by halting the overactive sebaceous gland activity and also um, suppressing inflammation. Uh, and the effect on P acne is known. So um, we've had 1450, 1320 IPLs, pulse dye lasers, all used for acne. Um, you know, really anecdotal studies, uh, never a double-blind randomized trial. So this uh, looked at the uh, uh, efficacy and tolerance of the 650 microsecond air lay system uh, for moderate to severe, so not mild to moderate, but moderate to severe uh, acne patients, 12 to 40 years old. Um, there were 60 subjects, so this was done by... Uh, Mark Nestor, Michael Gold, and myself, so 20 in each trial, three centers. Um, and this is the first trial that I'm aware of in the treatment of acne where people either were treated with the active laser or a sham, which was the laser and the noise without the actual laser. Um, so active treatment was uh, to 30 subjects, 10 at each site, and sham was also to 30 subjects, 10 at each site. Uh, and it was done over the course of a 12-week period. Uh, they had photographs taken, they had porphyrin counts taken, they had Vizia skin analysis done, uh, they had sebum meter evaluation of their sebum, and then safety and uh, uh, adverse events are also monitored, uh, evaluated. So this is moderate to severe, uh, anywhere from many comedones to um, easily recognizable papules, uh, no nodules or cysts, and moderate and severe has nodules or cysts, system you know about. So this is me treating somebody, and, and you can see how it's just painless. I mean, it's very simple to do. Um, you know, she's just sitting there as if nothing's phasing her. And that was not the sham. All right, so we know the system. Uh, the fluence is used really dependent on skin type. Um, so you, know, you look at the different um, skin types we treated, and we did treat all skin types uh, with the uh, device. Um, and so subjects in the active treatment group uh, had a significant overall improvement in sebometric evaluation of the forehead, cheeks, uh, and chin. They had a decrease in overall porphyrin count and most importantly, decrease in the number of inflammatory and non-inflammatory lesions, where subjects in the sham control treatment group either experience no improvement or even worsening of their acne over the course of that 12-week period. Uh, we also looked at tolerability. We looked at it, so did the subjects, uh, the usual things, stinging, burning, itching, tightness, dryness, and there's virtually nothing. All subjects were able to well tolerate the treatments and there were no significant adverse events. I'm going to show you some before and after, both of the sham uh, and of the treatment group. And these are actually the patients just in our study. Uh, this is now was submitted to ASLMS, and uh, I'll be presenting that uh, in a couple of months in Phoenix. So sham treatment after two treatments, six weeks after the baseline visit, you can see she's either no better or potentially even a little bit worse. Another sham treatment um, at the end of the study, I would argue my sham made this patient worse. Probably not. And here you go to active treatment. So here's after one treatment, still has acneiform lesions, still has some erythema, but clearly less, two weeks after the baseline visit. Another one after one treatment, you can see the improvement on her forehead and on her cheeks as well. And then the same patient, if you look at her six weeks after the baseline visit at the end of the study in her case, you can see the improvement, it's pretty obvious. And here again, go through the, uh, the sequence, baseline, post-treatment one, post-treatment two. Obviously some of that erythema is gonna persist for a while, uh, but the uh, inflammatory lesions are improved. And again, you can see the improvement here over time, severe acne at the beginning, and really improving within 12 weeks at the end of the study. And the same thing applies to this fellow here, baseline, after one treatment, after two, and after three treatments. And here's the other side of the same guy. 
So in summary, it's well tolerated, it's easy to do, uh, patients like it, high patient satisfaction rate, and sustained improvement seen at 12 weeks. I don't for a minute think it's going to cure acne, but certainly works much better than the sham, and it's the first study of its kind, to my knowledge.